I got you. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Etienne. I'm working for Carplaza, an open source just by the uh, company. So I'm going to talk about um, using QGIS as a backend for GeoNode. This project has been funded by uh, GFDR from the World Bank. So let me talk just quickly about QGIS. Uh, so it's available on uh, many platforms like Windows, Mac, Linux, uh, Linux, and Android. So usually people uh, know um, uh, the desktop version of QGIS, but there is also the server version. And it's quite new on the mobile, on Android, you can find the uh, QField. Uh, just, um, there is a big community behind QGIS, like you can see the number of uh, Windows standalone installer. Uh, the numbers are from uh, May, but in the meantime, uh, QGIS 2.16, uh, 18 was out, and I think like it's just growing the day up, uh, after day. So I'm going to present like the key features of QGIS. So uh, for instance, it has a symbology engine, like the rendering interactor. So we can use inverted polygons um, to uh, style the outside of, of the polygon and the shape burst fill. So for instance, like you can see on the edge of uh, the polygon, we can have a, a gradient uh, to uh, display uh, one polygon. We can have also a 2.5D uh, rendering engine to display like a kind of isometric view for buildings. You can have also like some layer effect, um, glow, shadow, blur, and you can uh, combine them together to make some nice effect. And there is also like uh, rule-based rendering, so you can define um, a lot of rules with some uh, expressions, conditions, to make them available like uh, for some scales or some uh, specific conditions. So this is not Google Map in QGIS, it's just a style like Google Map uh, based on uh, some uh, vectors data loaded in QGIS. So everything is uh, point and click, like available in the UI of QGIS desktop. There is no map file to write. And um, we can export this style as SMD, but unfortunately it's not as well, uh, um, uh, as, well like, uh, as much uh, powerful as uh, QGIS uh, file for styling. This is just an example of uh, a map um, made at the Financial Times. So they are using QGIS in production, so it's, uh, like it's nice uh, styling. So there is also QGIS as a server. So usually what is the workflow of a technician? So it creates a project and layers on this QGIS desktop, and then is using like uh, FTP or SSH to um, publish its data on the server, and then QGIS server will just read the, read the project and give access to WMS, WFS, or WCS on the web. And the main key feature is like it's the same rendering engine like between QGIS desktop and QGIS server. So what you see on your desktop is what you will get on your web service. So why not, QGIS, why not using QGIS desktop, I mean QGIS server as a backend for GeoNode? Because we saw that there is a, like, a big community behind and a nice uh, symbol, I mean a nice rendering engine. And we can like publish WMS, WCS. But there is like some problems that we got. So for instance, like QGIS server need a project and when a user will use GeoNode, it will upload a shapefile, for instance, or a TIFF, so it's a layer, but QGIS server will not, like, will not be able to render this, uh, this layer, it needs a project. So 
that was like QG server, like usually what it uh, does, it's uh, like there is a client and you made an OGC HTTP request, and then QG server will answer like with a basic service like WMS or WFS, uh, GML or PNG, but this doesn't fit in our uh, workflow because we don't have the project. So hopefully QG server has a system of plugins. So it's like a middleware for QGIS. So you can create new service in QG server or you can alter an existing service. Like you can alter like the WMS service if you want to add a watermark on your on your tile. You can ask QG server to render the tile and then after the process you can add your own watermark to the PNG. Or you can create a new service. So it's what we did in uh, this project. So we create a, a service called Map Composition. You give in the URL like the list between the name, uh, the name of the project that you would like to create. And you give also a list of files. And we use the QGIS Python API on the server to create the project on the fly. There's also like another problem that we got, it's uh, GeoNet is very linked to GeoServer. Um, so the first code, it's, it was like what it was in GeoNet before. And when we came with uh, our QG server backend, we need to add like this kind of hack, in the, this kind of uh, if statements to check if uh, the GeoNet is running like with GeoServer or with QG server. So it's not very really like uh, very beautiful. I would like to say like this kind of code. So we would like to improve this. Um, I mean to have a better uh, separation between GeoNode and the um, the backend like uh, QGIS or GeoServer. So what we did to uh, give tiles to the user, it's the client will make a <coughs> TMS request. And this, this request goes to uh, the to GeoNode, and we use GeoNode as a proxy. Like um, it will check if the tile is on the file system. Like we do a caching um, on the disk. If the, if the tile is not in the file system, then we generate a WMS request to QGIS with the project that we created before. And then we store the, the tile on the file system and we give the tile back to the user. Because QGIS server doesn't have a TMS uh, service by mm -hmm. default, so we created it by using um, GeoNode as a proxy. So where are we now? Um, so I have a video for this. So this is QGIS desktop. I loaded two layers uh, in QGIS, like a road layer and a polygon layer. So I'm going to start the road layer first. So I use the predefined uh, style for this layer. So it's a rule-based uh, renderer. So there is like a lot of rules like for each uh, item of my attribute table. Um, so for each item I can uh, choose like the minimum and the maximum scale. And it's all point and click, like you can see like we can uh, choose in the UI like uh, the width on my line and how it will be displayed on GeoNode. So I can add uh, <coughs> some levels. Yeah, that's it. And then I can also do the same for my polygons. So I'm going to do the inverted polygons with a shape burst fill, like just to make it pretty for the demo. So I'm using one color for <coughs> each. by default. 
And yes. So I want to publish these layers to Geonode. So now I'm going to uh, our own instance of Geonode, which is running the QGIS server backend. So the UI is pretty much the same uh, in journal. Like there is no difference. It's only in the backend that there is QGIS server. So I can add my two layers. So I will start by the road. That's it. That's QG server rendering like the legend and the tiles using exactly the same style as, as uh, I've done in QG's desktop before. So we have the same uh, features as uh, Geo7. We can have the attribute table. We can download the layer as uh, zip, or we can have access to the tiles URL. There is a metadata tab. So now I can add also my other layer, like the polygon one, my boundaries. Yeah, and I have all my uh, boundaries with my shape burst field. That's for the layer management uh, <coughs> with the QG server backend. So we can also create the um, maps. And it's using like the tiles that we are just creating with the, with the backend. So this is a new viewer that we created using Leaflet. Um, we have less tools for now, um, not editing, but I mean, we can add layers and we can also like reorder them. So it's caching at the first time, but then when the tile is created, then it's saved on the file system, so then it's quicker for the, last, I mean for the next visit. Uh, excuse me, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's, uh, so then we can save the map. Um, so where are we now? So what we would like to do now is to have a better integration of the QG server backend in Geonode. Uh, as I showed you quickly, uh, Node is very linked to GeoServer. Um, we would like also to add the style support. I'm going to uh, like, yeah, talk about that just after. To have a universal API for Geonode backends. Uh, I mean, we don't want to make the code just specific for QG server. We, uh, if Geonode, maybe later, we would like uh, maybe for now there is GeoServer, uh, we are doing QG server, maybe um, map server will come, or maybe ArcGIS server, why not? <laughs> we would like also to improve like uh, performance and rendering issues, like we have just some like adding map proxy or doing meta tiling, not doing uh, one request per tile. Uh, we can add uh, the authentication system because we are using Geonode uh, as a proxy to the requ and to request the WMS, so we can use Django Guardian for that. And then we would like to integrate uh, Geonode into QGIS. So you have to imagine that this is QGIS, and maybe in a, in a few weeks uh, you can have like on the left panel like you have all your data stores like PostGIS. Uh, WFS, WMS, and you have Geonode, and you can like add a Geonode to this uh, to this browser, and browse like load uh, layers from uh, Geonode instance. 
And also, why not adding some buttons to publish your layers as a map into a Jira instance on the web? That's uh, in our roadmap. So I put some links like for what we created exactly. We created like so one QG server app for uh, GeoNode, one plugin for QG server to create the project on the fly. And um, thanks for GFDR to fund this project.